Well, funny enough, I start up a video series called The History of Words and Pictures. The first one, and previous, was about a Renaissance book of miracles. And while I'm thinking about what I'll do next, I stumble across this comic book, which is easily one of the greatest graphic novels of all time. And that's not just my opinion. You know, I was gratified to see actual critics say that as well, because to me that conclusion seems just incredibly obvious. It's by Emile Ferris, a Chicago illustrator, and she was unknown to the comic book graphic novel world until this just came out of, you know, like fell down from the sky. Here on the back is just a wonderful depiction of the uh, main character, who is Karen Reyes. She's a young girl growing up in gritty, late 60s Chicago. The concept of the book itself is that you're reading through her spiral notebook that she drew and wrote in. She's a misfit who identifies more with classic horror protagonists and monsters than with almost anybody around her. That's a detail taken from Emil Ferris's own life, and there's a lot of her in Karen, and uh, the whole thing is almost a magical, realist, reimagined life, or backstory, kind of. The art is what a lot of people have focused on so far because it's so stunning. You know, each chapter starts with uh, her facsimile of a classic old-school horror magazine cover. And you can see how remarkable they are just from this one example. Speaking of the art, it's almost all done in this just exquisite crosshatch. I think that's the right term style. Uh, here is Karen's mother, who is of prime importance in the tale. And the tale is essentially, it's a coming-of-age memoir and mystery at the same time. Karen's growing up, learning about herself, her family's going through some really serious stuff, and this is all happening with an overarching mystery that Karen wants to get to the bottom of, which is why she not only imagines herself as a werewolf most of the time, but as a gumshoe werewolf, which is just awesome. Can't say how much I love that crazy combination, and uh, Karen is instantly one of my favorite fictional detectives of all time right now. I'd say most of the focus in the reviews has been about the art and the story, both of which are, you know, five-star incredible. But uh, not enough has been paid to uh, just the flat-out writing. I think Ferris is a great writer. Here's a very minor example. Karen, you know, loves horror. She hates frill and that kind of thing, and Barbies, whatever. So uh, she describes the flowers in a friend's room as uh, looking the way a punch in the neck feels. Now, I really, really hope I'm the first person to make the following comparison, but I might not be. Uh, this book is kind of like Where the Wild Things Are's Big Sister. You know, both you have children escaping into the world of monsters and their imagination. I'm not saying that's deliberate at all, or that it's derivative, but if you look at this panel right here, I think you can kind of see what I mean if you love Where the Wild Things Are and Marie Sendak's books in general, and, you know, how could you not? I think he's one of the greatest to ever live at this combination of pictures and words that I want to explore in this video series, where it's, you know, it's mostly image with some words, which again, you know, naturally comes up in the comic book form. So if you take the kind of shinier moments, like that panel that I just showed previously from this book, if it was only things like that, I think uh, Ferris could have created an absolute classic of a children's book. And Karen here and Max there uh, definitely have some similarities, but this is a much more, uh, you know, dark and disturbing tale. This is the only full-page image I'm going to show, you know, full-page spread, both of them, uh, and it's a crowd scene. She has a lot of different crowd scenes. You can see how amazing it is. I'm not going to linger. I mentioned the quality of the art, but not how innovative it is. So here's just one example, and it's just a preview, so I don't spoil it for you, but you'll see a little bit of this face within a face, and it's really cool when you come across this thing reading the book. Which you should do immediately. Uh, if you're kind of the person who wonders, you know, why do I have adult friends who are intelligent and read comic books? I, I can't think of a better example. If you want to dip your toes and try something, just there's no point messing around. Just dive right in and try this. So I was earmarking things that interested me. Amazing panels, sequences, turns of phrase, anything that I wanted to go back to. And I was doing it on both sides, like north and south in the book, and then this is after about halfway through ripping all those out because I just covered, like, you know, I inserted one in basically every other page. Now, this is a veritable Russian novel of a comic book. It's, like, well over 350 pages. But your word count is still going to be small compared to a very small compared to a typical novel, right? Because you have such limited space. And to me, though, that's the art about words and pictures. And you've got to choose your words carefully, and they have to be potent and complement the picture and still add all the nuance 
and complexity that you want. And uh, I think she does that brilliantly. This simple word bubble right here, for instance, you have to be so economical. And, you know, those sparse phrases right there work perfectly with the image, which I won't show. Speaking of this part of the story, this is the story within the story. Karen's working on a mystery. She's trying to solve a murder. And uh, surprisingly, you go back deep into the victim's life. It, in and of itself, turns out to be basically the grimmest, most harrowing, and haunting part of the whole book. And that pulls in a lot of history, right? So it's from before Karen's life. It's in the World War II era. That's all I'll say there. And uh, history is very present in this work, too. I'm a history nerd, so I haven't even brought that up yet. So Karen's, you know, she knows that the Kennedy assassination happened when she was really young. She remembers it a little bit. She's alive for MLK's assassination. Then you have this other character's story arc from the past that pulls in the events of World War II. And this is all improbably woven into this seamless tale that wraps in that, as well as an intense family drama, coming of age, so to speak, despite Karen's young age, a uh, tale, a murder mystery, and an ode to horror. So to try to sum up, uh, obviously I'm just, you know, over the moon for this. It's a milestone work. It's deeply moving. Uh, I didn't get into some of the things that Karen goes through, but uh, if you've been through anything similar, I, I think you'll feel it. And it's a part one of two, and uh, Miss Ferris is working on part two, wrapping it up, I believe, as we speak, so it is not too late to get on the bandwagon. My favorite thing is monsters. Read it.